In the neighborhood of Niger, Nigeria is grappling with issues of insecurity in different parts of the nation. In the second part of my interview with Nigeria's former president, Olusegun Ol Obasanjo, I asked him why the situation has persisted. Yes, we have some element of insecurity in Nigeria. The militants in the Niger Delta, the uh, situation in, in Jos, uh, the uh, Plato State, um, those are um, cases of insecurity. Um, there are uh, uh, kidnappings, uh, assassinations, but um, I will not say that uh, what is happening today uh, is more than what happened yesterday. There is no country that hasn't got an element of insecurity. I was watching the television in this country today, and what did I see in uh, a city? 368 kidnappings in one city, in Phoenix, I think, it's, uh, in one year. That's more than one kidnapping per day. But you don't hear about it. That doesn't make the United States of America unlivable or absolutely insecure. So we have these things almost everywhere. Now, it's when it, is, uh, it happens in Africa, we exaggerate it. Now, I'm not saying that we should not do something about insecurity. Now that I, you, you put it together with the state of insecurity and compared uh, that situation with what happens in America, perhaps what raises the concern of many, not only Nigerians but even other people elsewhere, is the fact that as compared to, say, the United States of America, the security apparatus uh, never seem to really be effective. We don't see investigations that lead to some conclusions. We are doing something about the militants in the Niger Delta. We have the issue of amnesty. We have the issue of post-amnesty. What do we have? To, uh, how do we rehabilitate? How do we retrain and absorb them or integrate them into the society? We are also doing something about the um, plateau in, uh, in Jaws. It is a matter of communal issue. People call it religious, but our leaders and everybody who knows that situation very well know that it's not necessarily a religious issue. It's no. basically a social, economic, and ethnic issue. We do not accept it as a way of life, and that is very important. And our investigators, our policemen, our security um, agencies are doing their best. Now, an Abuja court has given a go-ahead for a warrant of arrest uh, for uh, the chairman of your party, PDP, Mr. Vincent uh, Oblafo, for embezzlement of public funds. How does this affect your party? We believe in rule of law in Nigeria and we work uh, very uh, much uh, along that. If, uh, uh, and there's nobody above the law in Nigeria for all I know. Um, so if uh, the chairman of my party or the chairman of any party for that matter, is found to have, uh, to have a criminal case and is taken to the court of law and the court of law found him guilty. Of course, he will have to face the music. Do you see headway being made when uh, prominent people keep uh, being seen to be involved in corruption? Well, well but, uh, in fact, that, uh, that, that means that the headway is being made. Now, if the prominent people, as you call them, uh, get away with it, that's when nothing is being done. That's when headway is not being made. But when you find prominent people 
those that we all will call untouchable being touched, then we are making progress. And there's, again, there's no society in the world that is uh, absolutely devoid of corruption. What we are saying in our own country is that corruption should not be accepted as a way of life. And it is not being accepted as a way of life if people know that if they are caught, no matter their social, political, or economic status, they will be dealt with, then we are making progress. Former President of Nigeria, Olusegun Obasanjo, talking to me earlier here at The Voice of America.